Hello, welcome back to another Creative Tap tutorial. Now, in this one, we're going to be doing some more um, titles stuff, or could, you could call it a logo reveal as well. It's essentially just a sort of um, colourful title that's sort of painted on by some brush strokes onto a piece of paper. So you can see we've got the GIF going on in the background of what we'll be creating. So let's dive on in and start creating something that looks cool like this. So. Just before we do, the assets that I've used in this tutorial are from a website called textures.com and you can basically make a little, um, what is that, oh, there you go, you can, you can make a, an account with these guys and it entitles you to like five or six free downloaded images a day. So obviously I've um, got uh, free, 13 free credits left, um, so yeah you can download, you get 15 free credits a day and you can download however many that'll entitle you to. So, for example, the paper texture I use for the background, uh, I can't remember which one it is now, it'll probably be maybe something like that. If you click on it, it'll then open up in another window and then the small version, which is big enough, 1024 by 668, is free and that's one credit. Um, if you, if you want like extra large or anything bigger you have to get the premium account but you know you don't really need that um, you can get a medium version of this one 1600 pixels by 1044 for two credits and you just click that and then you get 13 free credits a day as I said um, the other one I used was this image so I searched brush and oh so gone a bit crazy there um, yeah I searched brush as you can see and then that little red one I clicked um, down here um, no not that one uh, where was it up here somewhere yeah you saw where it was ah, here we go here it is so if you click this it'll open up in another window again and I just got the uh, CSS purchased I got, so it just cost me one credit but it says zero now because I've already purchased the small one anyway that's enough of that. It's textures.com. Make an account and download this image and a sort of paper image, and then you are ready to go. Okay, let's dive on in. <clears throat> so I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to call this text. Okay, I'm going to get my text tool, and I did download from dafont.com a uh, font called Levi Rebrushed. Um, so feel free to go to dafont.com and download that font if you want, or you can use any font really, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and type creative tap. There we go. I'm going to move this into the center. And let's turn on our title action safe and just make sure that this is in between these two lines like so. Yeah, that's fine. That's exactly where I want it. So I can turn off title action safe now and there we go we have our text next is what I want to do is I want to give it some sort of um, mixed sort of color so I'm gonna right click or let's go up to layer new solid and let's call this color the reason I right click down here if you right click in the empty space you can go new and then solid but there as well um, I'm gonna put an effect on here called four color gradient so if you just type in four drag four color gradient onto this and then you have four different colors now you can um, p um, change the colors if you want to but I'm just I'm gonna stick with the colors that are here but I'm gonna move them further into the center because remember our text is right here so we want all the different colors to spill over so these little source points I'm just gonna move closer so the colors blend more in the middle something like this and that'll be fine so it's going to be all kind of like different colors <clears throat> so that's done now what I want to do is I want to move this color below this color layer and then I want to go to the track mat if you can't see this track mat just click toggle switches and then you'll see it and I want to change this to alpha mat creative tap so what that'll do is it'll take the if we turn this off just to illustrate what's happening um, we've now got creative tap if we go to the alpha channel it'll just show a black and white channel of where the text is showing let's say the text was a different color uh, let's say it's blue when you go to alpha channel it just shows you everything black and white uh, black is where you won't see stuff white is where you will so that's just the alpha channel of the text anyway back to RGB and let's turn 
this color layer back on. So again, as I said, let's go alpha matte creative tap. So that color is only showing through where the text is. So we've got sort of multicolored sort of text thing going on. That's awesome. Right. What we're going to do now is make a new composition. And we are going to call this brush strokes. And we'll click OK. OK, cool. We're going to drag our text in for now, just so we can kind of line some stuff up. And I want to go ahead and import my um, brush strokes so I know that I think they're on my desktop. So I'm just going to actually, the paper and the um, brush strokes, I'm just going to click and drag them in like so. And then they should load in. Import in selected items. There we go. <clears throat> so the brush strokes, I'm going to click and drag this on top. And we only want one of them. And I think I'm just going to go for the middle one. So we're going to mask that out. So if I, with this layer selected, if I get my rectangle tool and click and drag around like so, then we've just got that one isolated now. And we also want to get rid of the white background, okay? So the way we're going to do that, make sure you have your layer selected. Come up to the effects and presets, type in extract click and drag that effect on to the brush stroke. Now what this will let us do is we can alter this white point value and it'll get rid of the white so I'll probably bring us down to about by here because you can see on the graph this is where most of the color is. Um, so then you've got this white softness as well so you can either click this square or this white softness and it just kind of feathers the edges very very slightly. There we go, and we can move this back up slightly if we want. There we go, that's fine. So we've, we've got that separated. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to click this toggle transparency here because I'm about to turn this paint stroke black, and we've got a black background because we haven't got a colour in the background. So if we just click this toggle transparency grid, it'll just show a transparent background. Cool. <clears throat> so what I want to do next is get my curves. So type in curves by here click and drag this onto the paint stroke. I just prefer, you don't really have to do this, I just prefer to make it black, it's just, I just find it easier. But as we will be using the alpha again of this as a track mat, you don't technically need to do this, I just find it easier. Um, <clears throat> okay, so my first stroke, I'm going to rotate it slightly, like this, so it kind of gets, imagine if this was being painted on um, we we it's, it's kind of instead of having it going across, it's kind of nice to have you know one or two which are slanted. So I'm going to duplicate this now. Select the layer, hit Control or Command and D, and then we'll have a second one. So I'll hit, get the rotation again. Maybe change this to minus 31. So it's going the other way. And then I'm going to move this over here, so it paints on some of this stuff. Okay, again, I'm going to repeat this process, Control D, but this time I'm going to take the rotation down to zero, so it's just horizontal, like so, and then I'm going to cover, basically I want to cover as much of the text as I possibly can. Okay, so we'll get that in there, like so. I'm going to duplicate it again and move it across so it covers all this text over here cool now you can still see there's some color showing through so what I'm going to do is do two more duplications so duplicate this and I'm going to now rotate it to minus 180 because obviously on one side of the paint stroke is quite thin the other side is quite thick so if I rotate this to minus 180 it's just about covering all of that colour as much as possible so we can't see any of the colour text. I'm now going to move this up. It covers 90%, 99% of that colour. And finally I'm going to duplicate one more and move it over to the other side. So it covers that creative, the C and the R by there. Move that up a little bit. And then hopefully <clears throat> we'll be well on our way to having all of this covered. 
Now another little trick, because there's a little bit in there, um, let's just move that back, it doesn't matter if there's bits missing, it may, may make it look more authentic. Um, yeah, the other thing we can do um, is we may, we're going to select them all now and maybe scale them up by about 10%, so the scale for them will all be set to 100, so if we hit S while selecting them all, shift select them all and hit S, they're 100, so I'm, I'm just going to increase this to 110 and it'll do for each of them and hopefully I'll cover a little bit more of the colour. So let's see once it previews in, yeah, so now it's all completely covered which is great. There we go, so we've got our brush strokes working. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the text out of here because we don't actually need it in here. So delete that. Great. Now, um, if I show you just on the first one, um, I'm going to drag an effect on here called Linear Wipe. Okay. So I'm going to drag that onto the bottom one, turn the eye off for all of the others. Now, um, if you, if I run through this transformation completion, you can see at a hundred percent, it's not, there's nothing there. When I bring it to zero percent, it kind of, you can see it kind of paints on. So what I'm going to do is at zero, I'm going to set this to 100 and I'm going to click to keyframe it. I'm then going to move forward 15 frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen frames and I'm going to take this down to zero so you can see that paints on. Now what I'm going to, if I hit U you can see my keyframes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these keyframes onto each layer okay and so they'll all have the linear wipe on there with those keyframes so if I hit U on this one now uh, what I want to make sure actually is that my current time indicator is at the beginning so then these all are at the beginning and they will all happen at the same time but we're going to offset them later so don't worry um, so let's do the same for this layer control V this layer control V this layer control V and finally the top one control and V now if we select them all and hit U we will see that they've all got these linear wipe keyframes on, which is great. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what I want to do is these two um, sl slanted ones, these two, uh, whatchamacallit, diagonal ones, I want to put these two at the top, and you'll see for why in a minute. So I'll put them at the top, and I'm going to turn all of these back on. So if we just scrub through, you'll be able to see, once these turn back on, you'll be able to see that these all kind of animate in sort of as, as if they're being painted in um, together, but that's a little bit too much, yeah, but as if they're being painted on. So um, we want to offset them all. So what I'm going to do is come to the beginning, and I think I'll offset them by about 20 frames. So if I hold shift and press page down from the beginning, it'll move in 10 frames, so that, that's 10 frame jump, you can see illustrated by there, and I want to go again another 10 frames, so it'll offset them by 20, okay? Next, this is, this is an important bit, I'm going to select the top one first, then shift select the bottom, and I'm going to hit alt and end bracket key, which will cut all of the layers down to this point, okay? After I've done that, I want to right click my layers, and I'm going to go to Keyframe Assistant Sequence Layers and then click OK and it's going to sequence them every 20 frames okay so you'll see now and the reason I put those two diagonal ones to the top is because it's going to do it with the top one first then the bottom one then the next one and I want those diagonal ones to come first once you've done that just simply click and drag to extend all of these to the length of the composition and then one by one they will be coming in and painted in one by one, which is great. So this is our brush strokes all sorted and done. We've got our text all done. So what we want to do now is create our final composition. So new composition, type in final, and click OK. Great, so first of all, let's put our paper in there. And we may just want to scale that up slightly. Like so. Yeah, that's good. Okay, next we're going to bring in our text. 
like so. And I want to make the paper maybe a little bit darker, um, just to make it more legible. So curves, drag curves onto there. And then I'm just going to maybe darken it just slightly. Oh, that's done to the text. Well, I wanted to do it to the text anyway. There you go. And actually, now that I've done it to the text, I may not even need to do it. I may do it to, to the paper as well. So let's click and drag onto the paper layer. Yeah, that's fine. You can you can spend all day with this really, um, but I'm just going to leave it there just just so I can get this tutorial done. Um, I'm going to go back to my project window, and I'm going to bring in the brush strokes. Put that above the text layer. And now what I want to do is I want to get this text layer and change it to alpha matte brush strokes. Okay, so let's um, give this a little preview now. Um, basically, as the brush strokes are being drawn in, again, it's only going to show up where the brush strokes are being drawn in. So if we come to the brush strokes, it's only going to show up in those areas, okay? So let's go to final and give this a little preview. <clears throat> Shouldn't take too long to preview in. Um, it's not playing back at full time, at, at real time, sorry. But you can see um, that gradually it is doing it. So that's basically how you pull off the effect that you saw me put, um, put, show you earlier in the little GIF. And then you can render it and use it as your as a logo reveal for your YouTube channel or anything, really. So it's not playing back real time. But if I show you that GIF, it's, just, it's the exact same thing. Let's go tutorials, um, brush stroke, and let's open this GIF. There you go, it's the exact same thing. This is just rendered, so it's real time. And this is this is the effect that we've just done. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you learned some um, interesting techniques. This doesn't have to be done on text, this can be done on images. Absolutely anything can be painted in, even a piece of footage if you so, if you so wished. So, cheers for tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks, bye.